All right, lots of energy, people. Let's give a big Greenville welcome from X98.5 and all of you for Tyler and Josh of 21 Pilots. <laughs> Time. We are going to jump right in and uh, let these eager members of the clique pick your brains. Over the many years, oh sorry, over the many tours you guys have had, who, if any of those have you toured with, do you feel like influenced you in the process of bringing awesome music to us? So other ba other bands? Yeah, who like influenced y'all during the tour? Oh, yeah, no, we don't like other bands. <laughs> <laughs> well. The Mute Math sessions wouldn't have happened without Mute Math, so... That's true. Um, probably that band. Yeah, no, actually that is a band we like. Um, <laughs> Josh and I were fans of Mute Math before anything happened for us, and then to be able to tour with them and then become friends uh, was... It was something that definitely influenced us, so I have to pick them. What crazy things would you like to do on stage again? or? What are crazy things in general? Uh, if it would be tattooing each other or playing Mario Kart again, we would both be in. So, which of those two would we rather do again, or anything like that? Anything like that. Um, Definitely not the hamster ball thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was so tiring. It was. You had to do it the most. It was a leg workout for sure. And then and then Tyler was like, "Do you want to try it? It's super cool." <laughs> um, I like. I, I'm. I, I'm not as good at Mario Kart, so I didn't do it, but you did it. But I liked when you did that. Thanks. I could tattoo your leg while you play Mario play Kart. Play Mario Kart. <laughs> Just combine a bunch of ideas we've already had yeah, yeah. into one. I don't know. It is a good question. We're always kind of trying to think, what would we like to see on stage if we were to go to a show? And, um, you know, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. I think that we were really glad that we were playing music in front of not a lot of people when we first started because we got to just try a bunch of stuff. Some of which failed, but a lot of which stayed. Um, and so whenever we see young artists kind of get shoved into a spotlight where they're playing in front of people, they're trying to figure out who they are, how they want to come across, what their shows want to you know, say, what they want to represent. And um, it, that's a tough place to figure all that out. So we're lucky that we were able to get a few years of just trying to figure out in front of no one under our belt before before we did this. So, and then the Mario Kart thing happened, and <laughs> we realized we were still figuring it out. So. so, Tyler and Josh, what's the number one thing you guys want to do on your bucket list? Number one on the bucket list. Jeez. <laughs> We just met. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, we've done a lot. You know, whether it's playing in front of more than a hundred people. That was number one for a while. It was. <laughs> it was. Play outside of our own home state was one. Mm -hmm. Outside of the country was one. Um, tour, Twitter job. I think the idea of Make playing more than one show a weekend was very exciting for us because when we were still working, you know, at a restaurant or wherever we were doing, I think we pretty much could only book during the weekends when we could call off work. Yeah. And the idea of being able to play shows through the week was this, such a foreign concept, but we knew that it kind of represented the idea of success or at least moving forward in your career and so that was a big one for us so we've been fortunate enough to check a lot of those off as far as still feels weird to play on a Wednesday yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know I think uh, I guess starting a family would be kind of fun that's what we'll I'm doing we'll be doing soon I guess so We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll regret that, but we'll, you know, <laughs> we'll see. 
Uh, my question is, if you could start a super group with musicians from any time period, who would you choose to be in the band and what kind of music would you make? Well, we know, I mean, it's easy. Celine Dion's band. <laughs> but we want nothing to do with her, just her band. <laughs> We would just play their music, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> All right. That would be a super group. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what moment do you wish you could relive again because of how awesome it was? Winning our jobs was great. <laughs> uh, I, it, it was just, I think it was really just because it meant that we get to spend more time doing this and travel more and play and because at that time we were just like to us the only way to move the band forward is to try and be in front of people and, um, and be playing shows and our job, we needed our job, the jobs that we had at the time uh, but to be able to kind of rely on this Um, and then there's like <clears throat> hometown shows that are just meaningful, playing in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, it's like tonight's gonna be really fun, but our moms aren't here, so it's different. Um, there's not, but we, we, there's definitely a, every night something to prove, but tonight's just a little bit less. <laughs> um, our moms are very critical. <laughs> it's all right they would say to us after we play. <laughs> um, I think a moment for me is just going, writing off the quitting your job thing, when, when we knew that we were able to quit our jobs to pursue music, you know, signing a deal and working with a booking agency and like really having a plan as far as going out and playing music and giving it a real shot. Um, when I put in my two weeks at the place I was working, I think it was a catering company or something in the food industry, we call it. Um, the response, uh, my boss was like, okay, well, you know, just know that if you ever want to come back, you got a spot. <laughs> I remember thinking at the time, like, thanks, you know, I appreciate that. Usually when an employee decides to quit, you, I don't know, kind of don't want anything to do with them after, but the idea of having a, a job, if I wanted to come back, was a good feeling. If I were to relive that moment, I would realize now that he had no faith in me making it in music. <laughs> he was planning on you. Yeah, he's like, I'll just keep the spot open. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Why don't you hang on to your shirt? Yeah. Um, and so maybe at that moment, I would have, I would, it would have been a more, um, I don't know, grandiose and flamboyant farewell. I think I would have liked to have that one back. What do you think about the conspiracy theory for the albums in the Reddit subgroup? Uh, next question, please. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I think that, I mean... Jeez. I don't know a ton about Reddit, but I know that... I know that it's pretty insane. Um, I knew that when we... had the platform to create something, whether it was an album or a song or multiple albums. I always felt like there was such an opportunity to tell more of a story, to fill those things with more, I don't know, um, meaning and purpose. And um, so when we dove into, you know, the story of Blurry Face and into Trench, it kind of working together and the narrative that runs throughout, I wanted to make sure that there was deep enough of a narrative that however far anyone wanted to go, there would still be meaning and content and things to understand and uncover and uh, I didn't know if it was going to be all for naught because I just didn't know if people would care enough to dive into it but I think that you know the, the community of people who've tried to figure out exactly what the story means and the, the little details of it but also trying to figure out how does that best relate to what I'm going through or what the listener is going through right now and um, you know something as simple as you know, giving a name or a place or a characteristic 
to an issue that you're having personally can can help you wrap your mind around it a little better. And so everyone that in our fan base that um, have decided to dive in and really try to figure it out, I don't know, it, it means a lot to us. And I guess we were relieved that people wanted to, or else there would just be this like whole thing out there that no one ever discovered or figured out, which would which would have sucked. And um, only our moms would know about it. <laughs> so, if you had to live in one of your music videos for a day, which one would it be? I think we maybe have decided My Blood. Because <laughs> we weren't there. It was, <laughs> it's really easy for us, that one. Um, we, I think we make things harder than they need to be sometimes for our music videos. Yeah. Jumpsuit, he's laying in a free, like the, that stream in Iceland was freezing. <laughs> uh, and he was in there for half the day. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, also Heavy Dirty Soul was freezing. It was in like January in Ohio. I don't know why we do freezing six, six degrees. <laughs> you think of, it's like it's one thing if it's like yeah you know maybe you'll. It's not like we look any better when we're cold. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, look, you look terrible when you're cold. Yeah. We're like we want more of that. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it outside. Freezing cold. <laughs> really cold. Can't feel my hips. Um. <laughs> he doesn't wasn't too hard. Yeah. I mean I wasn't. I was in jail. Yeah. But the, the, so, yeah, I guess it's... I don't uh, know about that, man. Do we want to live in the filming process, or do we want to live in the world of the... World, the, of yeah. The, okay, yeah. Um, I, I, it's tough, because, like, you, you get done with, like, shooting something, and then you, like, you want to watch it and enjoy it, but all you can think about is how hard it was to, yeah. to shoot it. Um, House of Gold would suck. That, yeah, that wouldn't... <laughs> We're pretty much dead there. Yeah. That's not that's not sustainable. Relying on those last Living. synapses that were sparking right yeah. before you die. Uh, yeah, my legs are off somewhere hitting a tire. <laughs> um, yeah, so probably not heathens then if we're it's the world. Um, Actually they all suck. Yeah, they none of them are that fun. We will say that My blood. What, yeah, my blood, man. Um, it's a band. We do think that the closest thing we do to manual labor. I mean, the shows are, you know, two hours of, I don't know, it's more of a, it's not that difficult where you wish you weren't doing it anymore. Right, yeah. But you might drive by, you know, we, I used to do landscaping, you know, everyone's had a job like that. So lucky now that that's not something that I have to do every day. You know, there's so many jobs that are really tough. But the closest thing we do to manual labor, something that's really hard, is a music video. If you think about a show, you have two hours to, I don't know, perform this this part in this song, in these groups of songs. But in a music video, it's literally upwards of 14 to 18 hours of performing the same song and trying to make sure that every time you do it, you're just as um, committed to the part. It's hard. I mean, I'm sore. Yeah. Freezing, cut in half, <laughs> everything. So I think another thing that I hate is not knowing when I'm going to be done with something. I mean, everything else in our life is pretty structured to where it's like, from this time to this time, we're doing this. Um, and if there's if there's an ending, in like that I that I know, even if it is 18, if somebody's like, it'll be it'll be 18 hours, and I mentally prepare for that. But with a music video, you kind of just don't know. You have to just go until you're done. And so that, that makes it a little harder, at least for me, too. Because I just, I, I really don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, it is hard. Uh, my, my Blood, or The Hype is cool, too, because we're just playing this song. And the roof collapses, I guess. Those were real things in our chest when they exploded. Those are actual, like, explosions. I don't think it came off yeah. as, as scary as it actually was recording that. Yeah. Like, okay, we're going to put these tiny firecrackers in your shirt. And then on the count of three, they're going to go off. And I was like, wait, wait, what? Yeah. 
But yeah, no, it was like a stunt. You know, there was guys there that were, you know, official. They told us like they work with other stunt people, and yeah, there was actually ex like explosives under our shirt. Wires connected behind us and everything. Yeah, like we were totally wired in. It's called a squib, and it's what they use in movies, like if someone gets shot or something. Yeah. They're like, it won't hurt that much. It's like if someone were to take their knuckle and punch you. I'm like, I don't <laughs> want that. I don't want any like of that. 30, like 30 times at the same time. This is not what I thought of when I wrote this song. <laughs> I don't know if we answered your question, but there you go. <laughs> If you were able to travel back in time to play your music in a different decade, what decade would you choose and why? I think that it's kind of weird even now, our, our music. So going back as far as possible would be cool. Just confu this would just be confusing. <laughs> as far as possible, like, dr drums? <laughs> yeah. What's that? Probably make more sense than a piano, though. Yeah, just hitting stuff at least, but yeah, they've probably been doing that for a while. Um, but yeah, like uh, I think into, like like this '60s. You don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> You're just saying a number. I know you. Why the '60s? No, I, I just, yeah, I, <laughs> he's right. <laughs> The 60s. Okay. When, when would we be cool? When would be cool? When do you think? 80s or 90s? Yeah. That's smart. That's fine. Yep, we'll do that. Sure. <laughs> um, an ongoing theory states that Josh is a figment of Tyler's imagination to protect him from blurry face. Can you confirm or deny this? Or... <laughs> Have you ever thought of the fact that, like, maybe we're all a figment, figment of your imagination right now. Like, you're literally standing in a room by yourself. And the only person is the guy in the back that let you in here because he knows you, has, you have something wrong with you. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to let, let her do this. You never know. It's all. Have you ever seen The Truman Show? It's a movie. 